proper nutrition and exercise, okay? When you have that stuff dialed in, there are a lot of potential upside to using metformin, okay? We see positive changes in inflammation, autophagy, which we talked a lot about yesterday, mitophagy, and the microbiome, okay? Downsides to using metformin. It can cause diarrhea, which is likely attributed to changes in the microbiome, okay? Mm -hmm. There's different ways that we can work around that. We can move to the extended release metformin instead of the regular uh, immediate release metformin. We can, sometimes in some patients, if you look at the, on the TCM side of things, metformin is a very bitter medication, and so you can actually do ginger tea or ginger chews when they take the metformin to help reduce some of the cold and bitterness hitting the stomach, and that Im seems to improve diarrhea in some patients. Some patients just need to change what meal they have it at. So, some patients can do metformin with a light meal or even on an empty stomach and not cause any diarrhea. Other patients can't and they need to eat it with their largest two meals of the day. Okay, so different ways around that. Uh, lactic acidosis definitely needs to be mentioned because this is a potential more severe complication of metformin. And it goes back to why metformin works for a lot of these things, especially when we start looking at AMPK. Metformin is a weak inhibitor of complex one in the electron transport chain. So if you read some articles online, what you will read is metformin poisons your mitochondria. Okay? But let's also think about our herbs. What about things like scopolamine and atropine that are toxic and lethal at high doses? that low doses can be really beneficial for some patients, okay? So, just because it blocks the, uh, slightly blocks or inhibits the uh, complex one in the electron transport chain does not make it a poison per se, because what the newer research is finding is that it's that blocking of complex one that results in the increase in autophagy, the increase in mitophagy, the, uh, the now what is really being considered in uh, clinical trials is a reduction in cancer from metformin. Extension of longevity, okay? So metformin can be a really, really powerful tool when used in the right patient. Um, some other, but again, the lactic acidosis is what I was getting at with all that. So because you're blocking the part of the electron transport chain, lactic acid can build up, and in some patients, that can cause an issue and can give them lactic acidosis. So that's just something you need to talk to your patients about and then monitor for it. Okay, your patients will get really sick if this starts happening, so it's, you'll know. It's not like a year's gonna go by and you're like, oh, you had lactic acidosis this whole time. You'll know, okay? Remember we talked about this yesterday. It, deplete some of your B vitamins. So that's something you, if you're going to start a patient on metformin, you have to make sure that you are increasing organ meat consumption, increasing leafy green vegetable consumption, and or starting a, uh, some form of a B vitamin to compensate for the potential long-term issues you can have with depleting B12, folic acid, things like that. And uh, another thing which socially, psychologically, is it's kind of taboo, okay? Some patients I've had discussions with them don't want to be on a diabetes drug if they're not diabetic, because I've used this in non-diabetic patients, because it labels them as a diabetic, which one is terrible to begin with that we have to even think about that, but it's a real thing. And so in some patients we haven't done metformin because of that, despite all of this. So it's just something you have to be cognizant of when you're talking with patients. Question? What dose are you, is it a lower dose or like is it, how are the dosing <coughs> the same? 
Uh, dosing it same, so I'm going for just under the max dose. Okay. Uh, I might have it at some point. I'll just tell you right now. So what I'm doing is is typically uh, starting at 500 milligrams mm -hmm. of IR once a day for a week. If patient tolerates that, well, again, you don't want to come in at the full dose. Much higher chance of having the if they have lactic acidosis that the, you'll hospitalize them. And two, if they're going to have the diarrhea, it's going to be extreme because it's such a high dose. So 500 milligram tablet, so one tablet once a day with their largest meal. After a week, we go up to twice a day. After a week, we go up to 1,500 milligrams a day, which is either going to be split one three times a day or twice and one. Usually, I'll just go with twice and one because when patients have to take something twice, they're more likely to get it in than three times. But if at a gram of metformin at breakfast, if that gives them diarrhea, but 500 milligrams didn't, then spacing out through the day does better for GI side of things. And then we're going up to two grams. So we're looking at two grams a day, split dosing. So again, that could be a gram and a gram, or it could be a gram 500, 500, depending on the patient, but preferably, uh, a gram and a gram, and then you can also get the 850 tablets as opposed to the 500 to reduce the number of tablets that they have to take. And so with that, I mean, the max dose is two and a half. So in some patients, we'll go up to 850 three times a day, which is just under the max dose at two and a half grams. And so you're taking them up to this tolerance and then are you keeping them on it for a length of time before decreasing them back down? Or is it just something that you typically are keeping them on? Typically the keeping them on. Okay. With, if they tolerate it well with all the current, so where a lot of this research came from is so metformin is one of the most studied drugs in the world. Mm -hmm. There is, and I actually had a, a conversation with a, a doc the other day about this because, you know, he was like, oh, but the negative things of metformin and, you know, berberine does a lot of the same things. And I'm like, great. It, there's some bench side research saying it does, but we don't have 30 years of longitudinal data looking at the use of berberine in millions of people mm -hmm. to show truly how safe it is and how efficacious it is at doing what it's claiming it's doing. And so in that mindset, I don't want to, like this has been studied in pregnant people, in kids, like metformin is a very, very safe drug. Not saying it is devout of side effects, and it can't harm somebody, but compared to a lot of other medications, it's really safe. With berberine, yeah, it's, it, it's considered safer, but we truly don't know. And so if I'm talking to the patient on, hey, one, if we're gonna do this because you also have a family history of cancer, and there's a lot of longitudinal data showing that diabetics who are on metformin compared to diabetics who are not on metformin and compared to the normal population, there's less cancer in patients who are taking metformin. They don't have that with berberine. So I can't say to someone, hey, I'm going to decrease your cancer risk by giving you berberine. Because there's no data on that. Mm -hmm. There's data on metformin. Metformin costs, if you were to pay cash, if it's not covered by insurance for whatever reason, $70 a year. Berberine costs 30 to 40 bucks a month. Why would I make them spend more money? Right? So this is why I have really started switching over to using metformin over berberine. So to answer your question, with, with all of that research on longevity, cancer, it's kind of something like, just like hey, this is a lifestyle, long-term thing that we could benefit you. This is the caveat that I want to say. Metformin will never, ever, ever replace proper nutrition and exercise. Okay, when you have that stuff dialed in, you get a big effect from it. We talked all about that yesterday. You can still add in metformin to get an added benefit, but it's never, you know what, you don't need to exercise, you don't need to eat healthy, let's just start metformin because you're missing out on a huge, huge piece, which is the diet and lifestyle stuff. So don't, don't forget that when you're starting to work with metformin in your patients. Thank you.